Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Mind Z. So today, I am starting up a new series, um, something that I'm pretty excited to show you guys, and I'm going to be talking about the history of Mind Z and some of the cool things that have changed, um, probably more of the most more notable ones. And there you go, I got the achievement. Um, but today, the first thing we're going to talk about is the spire. So, in the past, the spire has changed a lot. Uh, since it was added in the beginning of the game, which I'm going to go over through a bit in the video. So, as you can see right now, we have the um, the Fire Shrine, um, and it is the shrine dedicated to Agni, along with all of the other uh, four, three other shrines, uh, making the four seals of the gods. Now, um, this was not always the case. Oh, okay. Thanks, Toggle Sprint. So yeah, anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll get back to you at the end. The Spire was one of the original locations that was released in the first edition of the Mind Z map. As you can see in this old photo, there was no eastern continent nor a swampland, and you can see that the Spire looked very different. The Spire was built by Nicola Levy, a veteran builder who built many of the old locations that are still on the map today, and she retired a few years back. With the help of Cat Sage, Blue Skies, Reaper of Cakes, and Mosh Von Void, I was able to reconstruct the entire original Mind Z Spire by watching some old videos. This build was by far the tallest point on the map, as Mantle and Ghost Fleet did not exist at all during the time. There was very little parkour in the old spire compared to what we see today, except for one around the corner jump, which only dealt a few hearts of damage if you've missed. The rest of the way up was simply one block ups and variations of two block jumps. There were no symbols on the spire, as the gods did not exist at the time, and there was no Mind Z lore. If you'd like to see the spire for yourself, there'll be a download for a schematic in the description. Underneath of the old spire, there were plans to create some sort of a dungeon. As you can see in this video by My Belly is Happy, there was a small hole in the side of the little pond where you could go under and explore. There was a sign that said warning to not enter as there was no way out. This dungeon was never finished and is still there today. There was no lighting in here, so I had to up the gamma on his video. Under the spire in that big hole, there is a small sign that says goodbye old spire, you left a big hole in our hearts too, proving that this dungeon will never be continued. The loot of the old spire is what made it a great spot to gear and attracted many bandits and players. There were three military chests that were easy to farm because there were no mythic chests at the time, making the, myth the epic chests the highest gear possible. Getting down the spire was very similar to what we do now. There was a side that said, do not jump from this side, you will not land in water. Of course, you do the exact opposite of what they say, and you would jump into the small pool. Alternatively, you could just walk down the stairs and take a little bit of fall damage as you go. The spire did not last long, however, and it was changed by Nicola in September of 2012 to something close to the spire we know today. The major difference from then and now was the fact that all the elements were displayed on the spire, instead of only the element of fire. This was because there was only one spire at the time, and Floating Islands was still a work in progress, and would not even be open to the public for another six months. As you can see in this video by Snowfox, like most of the dungeons, the spire was first added without any stairs or parkour to get up. This was quickly changed, and the parkour has remained the same ever since. Being arguably the toughest parkour area in the game, if you made it to the top of the new spire, you would be rewarded with two epic chests found on all of the corners in the small towers. The loot changed a few months later to rare chest because it was too overpowered, and then again to the unique spire chest in January of 2013. In these spire chests, you were able to get baked potatoes, splash potions of weakness, iron helmets, iron boots, feather falling four boots, and iron ingots. Iron ingots were intended for settlements, but there was an unintended feature where you could actually craft iron armor from them. Because this was an unintended feature, it was removed in June of 2013, and iron ingots became absolutely useless. The difference between the spire you see here and the current one in the Mind Z map is that all the elements of the gods are shown. The name Fire Spire was given to it when the Water Spire and Wind Spire were added to the game in October 2013. All the elements were removed except for the element of fire, which was then put on all four sides of the spire. The spire remained this way for a very long time with its unique spire chest, and then was changed in August of 2015 with the secret update 
to then have the same loot as all the other spire chests. This made this location very unvisited as the parkour was very hard without any reward. Alrighty guys, so that is it for this first episode of the new series. I hope you enjoyed um, learning about the Spire today. Uh, if you have any suggestions about anything you'd like to see in future episodes of the History of Mind Z, uh, please leave them in the comments below. I have lots of stuff scheduled for this uh, new series. And uh, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you learned something, and we'll see you all next time.